I'm Karen. And I'm William. And he's 11. And I'm not. And we're wishing you a happy Valentine's Day with a sweet treat Treat. on a smaller Smaller scale. scale. What would Valentine's Day be without a heart-shaped box full of chocolates? And first you need a box. Ours is made from red cardstock. Just trace two heart shapes and cut them out. You can also use a pre-decorated cardboard sticker for the top like Karen did. You'll also need two strips for the sides of the box. Using a toothpick, apply a line of glue to the top and bottom of the box. On the top, keep it very close to the edge. On the bottom, apply the glue about one eighth inch from the edge. This is so the two halves will fit together. Fold one of the strips in half and crease it. Roll the edge to help you form the heart shape. Then, put the edge of the strip along the line of glue on one side. Hold it in place until it sets, then trim off the excess. Repeat this for the other side. You might need to put a little glue between the ends of the strip that you clipped off to close it up. And now, do it all over again for the other half of the box. Set these two pieces aside to dry while you make the assorted miniature chocolates. The chocolates are made from oven-baked polymer clay, like Fimo or Sculpey. You won't find the colors you need, so you'll have to mix. Karen used half white and half translucent to make something that looks like white chocolate. Then mix the white chocolate color with brown to make milk chocolate. Dark chocolate is made from a redder brown mixed with a little purple. Black would work well, too. And these are the colors for our chocolates. Roll the clay into a log. Use an X-Acto knife to cut about an eighth of an inch off the round end. Round the end a little more to make a shape like a cherry cordial. To make the little swirl on top, roll out another small piece of clay until it's very fine. Then pick it up and form a loop on the top. Press that into place. Now you can apply this technique to make a variety of chocolates just by changing around the colors of the chocolates and the swirl on top. You can also form rectangular chocolates by pressing down on the end of a clay log and cutting strips out of it. For a two-tone chocolate, press together the ends of a flattened log of milk and dark chocolate. Cut on either side of where they join, then cut that square in half. Round the ends a little and there you are. Now we have a nice big selection of chocolates. Put them on a tray of aluminum foil and bake them in a 275 degree oven for about 10 minutes. You need little papers to put the chocolates in. You can use tissue paper, but we use the papers from actual chocolates because they work better and because it was a great excuse to eat some chocolate. Use the biggest hole punch you can find and punch lots of cups. Hold each on your finger and use the cutoff end of a toothpick to press it into a cup shape. You can use the gold foil from foil wrapped candy to make your own foil wrap. Take one of the chocolates you've already baked and cover it with a small square of the foil. Okay, now it's time to put the chocolate in the box. Put a little glue on the bottom of the box and press in one of the paper cups. Then put a dab of glue inside the cup and put one of the chocolates into it. Press it gently in place. Just keep this up until the box is full. You could also leave some of the paper cups empty if the doll in your dollhouse has already indulged in some of the treats. Now that you have a box of chocolates, how about a bunch of roses? Ours are made from tissue paper and florist wire. If you have a flower-shaped punch, this works best, but round will work too. Put a dab of glue on the end of the florist wire and add punches to either side of the wire. Twirl these around the wire to form a bud. Then use a green punch to form a base around the bud. More green punches make leaves. Glue just the very tip of the punch to the wire, then pinch the tissue to make a leaf shape. You can make a full blooming rose by adding more punches beneath the bud before putting on the green base. Just keep building further and further down the wire until the rose is nice and full.
A single rose is very romantic, but if you want to make a bunch of roses, you'll need some nice ferns behind it. For this, you'll need a craft punch in a leaf shape. Punch out several leaves. Glue one to the top of a piece of wire, then glue the rest, overlapping, down the wire on either side. You can wrap the flowers in cellophane. Karen recycled the wrapper from a package of cookies. Lay the fern and six roses together. Gently twist the wires to hold them in place. Then wrap the flowers and tie them in place with a thread. You could also dress this up with a little silk ribbon. This chocolate and flowers project makes a great addition to any room box or dollhouse or just a very unusual and personal gift for Valentine's Day. You can download complete project sheets and templates to go with this video at onasmallerscale.com.